Welcome to the second of our tutorials of Train Supply Manager TSM. This time we're going to take a look at the automatic refueling. Um, now, the good news is you're already doing it. You see, uh, all we really need to do is run down to, well, run up, run anywhere. We've got a little siding here. All we need to do is put in a train stop, a normal train stop, not one of the special TSM ones, and then give it a name for fuel. Um, for now, let's use a very specific naming convention, capital F-E-U-L, capital S-T-O-P, fuel stop. Now, I have locomotive, I have trains with one locomotive, so I'm going to make this one. Fuel stop one, we've got somewhere to load in the fuel. The way this works is, um, if you had locomotive, two locomotives, you'd make it two, fuel stop two. And so just by changing the name and having extra fuel stops, you can completely avoid the need to have any circuits um, on your refueling arms for trains of different lengths. But as we've only got one, we'll start off with fuel stop one. And um, let me show you how this works. First of all, you need to have no fuel. Uh, what will happen is when this next goes to a stop, it will, um, how much stuff do we have in here? We have quite a lot. Um, when it next goes into a stop, it will evaluate the amount of fuel it's got on board. And if it's below a threshold, which is something you can set, then it will add the fuel stop to the end of its schedule. And this doesn't, ma this doesn't have to be a TSM train. This can be any train, uh, in, or would be any train that you have in your uh, network. Let's just get rid of a few of these so that the train, there you go, it's already coming. And as you can see, it's added a train stop, fuel stop one, because as you can see, it's out of fuel. Um, that is, you know, pretty much all there is to it, really. Um, in truth, there's a little bit more to it. Uh, that's all you need to know, though. Uh, we'll now just run along, uh, go to where the fuel stop is. Let's have a look at the schedule as the train fills up. It vanishes and it's back to what it normally is as soon as it leaves the station. So you don't have to worry about it lingering around. Um, Let's have a look at where you can do some settings in regards to these fuel stops. Uh, that is in mod settings. So um, under the map setting, you have the minimum refueling amount. So this basically is the threshold. And 20, it's not a uh, amount of joules in the engine, uh, sorry, in the uh, fuel inventory, because it looks at the fuel inventory. Um, but it's a calculation based on the energy point and the uh, engine efficiency. So 20 is a good um, figure generally. If you're finding your trains are running short of fuel before they get to the refueling, boost it up a little. If you're finding they're carrying too much fuel, you can lower it down. Now, the one thing is, as it says here, you can set the minimum refueling amount in the map settings, map well mod settings map, you can set the minimum refueling amount to a zero and the train will no longer go to, uh, none of your trains will go to uh, the refueling stop. It's a one or nothing deal. Uh, also electric trains work as well. As long as they don't have a fuel inventory, they won't try and go to the fueling stop. Uh, I don't think there's any in per player that are relevant to our refueling, but there are some things under startup. So, um, the fuel stop name, remember how it was fuel stop? Capital F U E L capital S T O P. This is where that comes from. You can change, you can't read that when I have it highlighted. Uh, so <laughs> let's just go back in there, the startup settings, fuel stop. Uh, you can change this from the startup settings. So you have to actually leave the map and come back into it. Uh, why don't we actually do that? Just so you can see how this works. 
what I'm going to do is let's save this as uh, tutorial two uh, refueling or auto refueling. Double L, I think it is double L. Doesn't really matter. And then we'll quit the game. Let's have a look at settings, mod settings, startup. Here's fuel stop. You could change this to anything you like. You could make it Bob. And then you'll go to Bob 1 uh, or Bob 2, etc. If you um, are more adventurous, you could use this kind of diction item equals nuclear fuel in square brackets and that will be the name of your fuel stops the other thing that you can change here is include locomotive count as part of fuel stop name so this is by default it's on and that's where the one or the two or the three comes from you can turn that off confirm let's have a look what happens with our refueling with those options set Uh, yes, let's continue that game. Um, we're going to have to go down to the refueling stop and we're going to have to change its name. Um, it no longer needs the one. It needs to be called item equals nuclear fuel. And that's it. It's ready for business. Now, um, let's find our train waiting here. Um, we need to empty it of fuel. Okay, we're going to have to run over there to empty the fuel again. This is probably why I have so much fuel on me. Um, and I possibly could just turn one of these guys on, but um, maybe... Uh, <laughs> okay, these are infinity chests, are they not? Um, hmm... Maybe I will have another chest here where we simply uh, remove unfiltered items. Yeah. And if we get rid of all of this again. Uh, we just had the thing pop then. So now, as you can see, it's picked up the uh, fuel using the icon terminology and no numerics okay if you want to run with um, the no numerics we have some tools for you to help uh, when you have more complicated trains than just um, single header one train uh, options we have a special train configuration reader um, and what this does is it needs to be close-ish to the train station. Uh, basically, within about two tiles, I think is what it says. Place the train configuration reader within two tiles of a named fuel stop to read the rolling stock configuration of the train. So, if we come back over here our trusty let's get rid of all of that and make some room for picking up some more soon as the train has reloaded here we go here's the train let's jump on board our train um, because as soon as it's empty Oh, hang on. I did not get the fuel out of it in time. Okay. Uh, all right, that's not quite going to plan. Uh, let's dump that lot off. Let's get the other bit of fuel out. Um, now let's actually take control. Oops. All right, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go back to iron ore and um, start loading up again. But now that we're riding it, we can uh, force it to do what we want it to do. So let's say it's full. It's going off to iron ore supply um, It's waiting here and of course it, um, It's 
waiting for these guys to empty, isn't it? There you go. Okay, let's jump on board our train, uh, which is going to nuclear fuel. And you'll be able to see that we have a signal pop up here as soon as the train comes in. The signal showed us a one locomotive and a one carriage. It basically reads the train configuration. Um, if we had an extra locomotive, say, on the back, and this will be enough, I think, to force it to um, want to refuel. Um, let's find out. Whoops, we're already there. This one's empty, so it needs to go to refuel. And this time it tells you that there's two locomotives. In fact, um, and it's taken it away, but it will add it back on again when it pulls in here, which it does um, because of this locomotive. Let's actually go back. This time I'm going to stop it. Uh, because I want to show you this in slightly more detail. Okay. If we get out now. So, the train configuration reader. There's three signals here. Um, there's a locomotive signal which says there's two locomotives. There is a wagon signal that says there's one wagon. And there's this other signal that says two. This other signal is called the position of the second locomotive. It has a value of three. Um, this enables you to do, well, unusual configurations of your trains. For example, you might have a train that looks like um, this. That would be two locomotives, four wagons. What about, um, and you'd therefore put a load here and a load here. But what about if that's not actually what you did, but what you actually did was have one followed by two wagons, followed by another locomotive, followed by two wagons. That would be completely different. Um, we need some signals here. Can you just go? And you need um, a fuel. And you need a, a fuel. Um, and we'll give you a stop just over here that has no real meaning. Um, fuel test. Uh, just test. All right. So let's jump on board, tell this to go to test. Go to test. Oh, it didn't get called test. It's shoulder. Uh, go to shoulder. Um, and we have no fuel, so it should need refueling as soon as we get there. It does. It pulls in, we'll tell it to stop, jump out. What you find now is that um, it's position four that your second locomotive is in. So you can actually test how to feed even a weird configuration like this by using this extra signal. Still have two locomotives, we have four cargo wagons. That, my friends, is about all there is on fuel um, on auto refueling in TSM. Thank you and see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.